In the past, others have told you what you can have. With the Beowulf line of balers, we've taken a different approach. This is the new Beowulf 2 Ram Baler, manufactured with proprietary industry first bolt in liners. These liners can be replaced in a day, saving valuable time and money. Other impressive features of this new Beowulf a progressive shear made from T1 tool steel, a vertical bale separation door, which eliminates material building up within the door guides, taking less effort to maintain and saving valuable floor space. Adjustable rear gathering ram tail rollers allow for the ram to continue to keep true as the wear increases over use. A packed shoe adjuster allows the ram to keep tolerances tight. Plug and play wiring has simplified the electrical system for fast and easy updates or repairs. A laser ram positioning system eliminates manual switches and is significantly more accurate. Industry standard Allen Bradley controls are another part of the premium components that have been designed into every Beowulf. Built with high quality Parker hydraulics, hard piping is used in select areas, greatly reducing the chance of hydraulic leaks and line shock. With universal left or right eject, your Beowulf can be modified or relocated any time in the field to best fit your needs. Every installation includes a factory tech startup to optimize the program for your product throughput. Together with high-tech professional after-the-sale support you can count on, our service reps are able to wirelessly access your baler for diagnostic and programming adjustments. You'll get more frequent inspections without the need for lockout tagout using these Lexan panels with built-in work lights. They take the hassle out of visual inspections. There is also easy access to pins for quick removal of cylinders. This time-saving remote grease station allows an operator to lubricate friction points, all from just one location. Your Beowulf is backed by the best warranty in the industry. And there's a planned maintenance program included with every baler purchased. Seabright Products and JWR, proud family-run companies located right here in the USA with outstanding service and support, all with your operational success a priority. We're building and servicing equipment you can depend on well into the future. It's time you had a choice. The Beowulf line of balers, achieving bale weights exceeding other entry-level two ram balers with rugged versatility and dependability you can rely on. Hi, I'm Brent Seabright, president of Seabright Products. Hi, I'm Dave Wolf, president and owner of JWR Inc. Thank you very much for joining us today on our two ram, Bell Wolf two ram launch. Um, we're very pumped up about introducing our product into the market and uh, excited to have this opportunity to partner with Seabright and uh, create the Bell Wolf line of balers. Yeah, I think, you know, it'd be really good if you'd tell them how you came about having this idea to build this particular line of balers, you know, with the expertise that you guys have in servicing equipment around the country and, you know, the need you've seen. Mm -hmm. Good question. We, we noticed in our opinion that there was a, um, a niche that needed to be filled in this industry. Um, so we have um, 
created our Bell Wolf line of balers, which is a partnership between Seabright and JWR. And you know, it, it's a it's a, a a tight thing. We only have four um, models of balers. Uh, we have two very rugged um, closed end balers and two 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 rams. Two very rugged two ram balers. Right. I think one of the, the things that uh, was most interesting is, you know, for 35 plus years, we've been doing stuff together in the marketplace, and this is by far the biggest undertaking that we've taken. Uh, I know that you've been testing balers at your place, our balers, and we've got them out at, at uh, customer sites on specific products. I think we're about three years in. Yep. To testing us, maybe you can expand a little bit about some of the products we've tested and, and how that's going. No, absolutely. Um, you know, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, the reason that, that we decided to do what we were doing. And uh, we're just simply listening to our customers. Uh, people want things and they want it now. They, they don't want to wait 20 weeks, you know, for a delivery. So our commitment you know, as the owners of the Beowulf line of balers, is we're gonna have product on the floor, ready to move. We will have parts. We will give you the best service. And, you know, we want to create a relationship. We're not looking to make a sale. We're looking to create a relationship. Which also, Brent, in answering your question, which is why we feel we have done our R&D and our, and, our, and our prove outs the right way. We've started this project in October, no, early 2018. Right. You know, so we're yep. years into this. We're thousands of hours of R&D, of making the bells, of, of testing. And we've had our bumps, um, but how, how, do you, how do you find out unless you, unless you well, do it? I, I think it's like you said, we're not making our customers pay the price while we improve the balers. We're putting our money where our mouth is. We're making it happen. We're doing the testing at your facilities and at, like I said, at very valued customer sites. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing, the biggest thing in, in this whole operation of doing this together is the, the knowledge that JWR has on uh, all the servicing of balers around the United States that you guys have done and then the manufacturing capabilities and the engineering capabilities that Seabright Products has. Uh, putting Absolutely. those together, we, we feel like we got a huge advantage over other people, you know. I mean, we know the problems, we're trying to correct those problems, we're trying to make it very user friendly. Uh, the serviceability part of the baler, we want it to be really simple when somebody gets there to the service. You know, some of the features that we'll get into later are, are designed to do that end. And, you know, at the end of this discussion, when we're done, People can uh, send in and submit questions, and we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Right, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, again, we have fun doing what we do. You know, we're having a ball doing this. And uh, we have a, our staff, our, our people, you know, from, the, from sales to engineering to, you know, the guys out in the plant busting their tails doing this. It's just been an awesome experience. You yeah, know, it's, we, a great, we're, it's we're having really a, a great team effort. You bet. I think we ought to go back and see what Gary and Amber are doing. Sounds good. I'm Amber Borger, Director of Marketing and Sales for JWR. And I'm Gary Brinkman. I'm Managing Director of Seabright Products International. And today we are going to take you on a tour of our Bailwood 2 Ram Baler, the latest innovation in bailing technology. This baler incorporates all the qualities you've come to expect from JWR and Seabright Products. But enough about us. Let's go take a look. All right. We've incorporated a lot of new features and innovations into this baler. First of all, it's a 36,100 pound behemoth. You can see we're using a vertical separation door. We're using bolt-in liners. We're also using adjustable eyes, a convenient control station using Allen Bradley components, an accent wire tie system. And when you get to the back, we've actually developed something new that's a shimless pack shoe adjuster. We're also going to show you how we've set up our remote grease station and how we've moved our hydraulics to the back of the baler. We're going to go through our power unit with you and show you all of the high quality components as well as we're going to show you our Lexon panel and work light. And we're really going to show you how easy and friendly this baler is to use. One of the things that we really wanted to address with this machine 
is warranty. We started with the best warranty in the business. Two years or 4,000 hours parts and labor. Further, we went to five years, 10,000 hours on the chassis. Also included with the purchase of your baler is an all-inclusive plan maintenance program. This maintenance program consists of a two-year or 4,000 hour program and we will come in based on your material, your schedule, and we will do complete inspections of not only all the electrical, the hydraulics, the mechanical, the operations and safeties of the baler. We did not cheap out. We're including filters and oil samples. One of the other things that we really wanted to address was the lead times. Not only are we carrying parts on the shelf, we're stocking machines. Dave, we're standing here looking at the frame of a Beowulf baler and we're talking about warranty and mm -hmm. uh, I know the discussion that we had over several weeks about offering the best warranty in the industry and I think we hit the mark with that. Uh, you know, we have a five-year frame and ram warranty, we have a mm -hmm. two-year parts and labor warranty and in addition to that, something I don't think anybody else offers, we have a two-year plan maintenance program and I'd like you to just mm -hmm. give a little bit of uh, uh, what that includes. Sure. So yes, it's a, a two year or 4,000 hours of plan maintenance that is included with the purchase price of any Bell Wolf. We wanna make that clear. And what you get when you join the Bell Wolf team is simply you'll get us to perform your service for you. We will help you, we will, we will make sure that um, we're in constant contact with you. We want to. We want to look at how. We want to know how many hours you have on your. Right. Machine. They don't have to worry about what interval do I change oil? What interval do I do fillers? What do I have to check? What are the safety checks on it? The plan mm -hmm. maintenance takes care of all that for them for yes. two years. Yes, for right? two years. So we're coming in. Um, obviously, your baler is running at optimum performance at the time. You know, after we leave on the install. We're then coming in Brent, uh, the first trip back, 200 hours. Mm -hmm. um, we're, our filters, um, air and oil, are included in this program. That's um, nice. And we also perform oil sample on every check. Uh, so we're coming in at the, uh, on the first interval at 200 hours, and then we are doing 500 hour intervals thereafter, um, which is, you know, your two years or 4,000 hours, whichever runs out first. Um, it's excellent. Yeah. So, uh, and again, our, our, you know, our, the big part of the, of the PM program is safety is very important. We want to make sure that everybody's safe, that the operators Absolutely. are safe. Yep. And, you know, that is our primary concern. Um, we also have a very extensive uh, check down on mechanical, electrical, you know, we're going right. to go through and we're going to we're, we're going to make check sure everything. that there's there's no issues for them to have to worry about in that two year period. And also, uh, I know a part of it is that they can extend that plan maintenance for three years at a nominal price that that lines up. They can actually have the with our five year frame and with more. our five year frame and ram. And yes. which brings me to I've I've asked Mike Amante to come in and and uh, talk a little bit. Hey, Mike. With our good, come on in. Thanks, sir. With our five-year frame and RAM warranty, uh, you can see the beefiness of, of the frame here. And uh, one of the critical areas in a frame is, is the floor. So I, Mike being the lead fabricator, he knows that if we ever have a problem with that, that he's going to hear about it first. And uh, I thought maybe he'd like to explain what they do and how the floor is put in and that kind of stuff. So Mike, what? Mike. What do you got to say here? Well, the floor is AR400. We put uh, interlocking guide strips on the ram and on the floor of the machine, fully welded in certain spots, and uh, that reduces the wear. The wear. Mm -hmm. uh, it reduces friction. Which, I mean, it's just our, our tongue and groove right, also right, right keeps the ram yes. riding truer. It yes. doesn't and allow then, us to grab a big piece and bring it back behind right, the ram. Correct. I see that the, the floor the actually tabs out through the sidewalls. Mm -hmm. Yes, the floor sticks through the sticks through the sides about four inches. That's that way you're fully welded all the way down right. both sides. And that's the, the inner and the inter, that's the interlocking yes. part of the floor Correct. that you're talking about that keeps it so. Yep. Uh, so your floor is not just going to drop. Yeah, it's integrally tied together to welded. the frame. Correct. 
Yep. Well, I know, you know, you and I talked, Dave, that about the length of time and we decided on five years on the frame and ram and I'm highly confident with the engineering and the and the weldments that we're putting together and the beefiness of, of our frames and rams. I don't see any problem with, with offering that five year warranty. I think the two year parts and labor, we use all high quality parts. I don't see any problem with that. And I really like the plan maintenance part because that gives our customer that uh, warm feeling that they're not going to have to worry about okay now there's something wrong i got to go argue with the the manufacturer about whether it's warranty or not and mm -hmm. you know for two years they're off the hook it's it's on us no absolutely and that's why we felt it was so important to include yep. that plan maintenance in the purchase price of the machine yep let's so. see what amber and gary are doing sounds good thank you dave we're standing here at the back of the eject ram and I'm going to show you one of my favorite features which is the Lexon panel and the work lights. The feedback that we've had on this feature has been phenomenal. No more wondering if your machine is full of material, you're able to easily see the cylinders, the hoses and all of your accessories and it's made maintenance super easy. We've had phenomenal feedback from maintenance managers because they no longer have to wonder if their team is cleaning out behind the baler and making sure that there's no debris and other obstructions in the way. So a couple of the things that we changed in the back of the bale wolf, we actually moved all of the hydraulic systems to the back. So you can see these hoses right here are normally up towards the front. We've actually moved everything back so it's simpler from a service perspective for people to be able to see this. The second thing that we added on here is you can see the grease cirques on the back. They're all labeled and you can see very easy to be able to access. The third thing that we've put on here is the laser system. One of the things that we really tried to focus on with the Beowulf is simplifying the electrical system. Removal of limit switches, removal of proximity switches. That laser actually controls everything about the main gathering ramp. It tells you when the bale's full, it tells you the cycle, the length, how much of the bale you've made. One of the other things that you'll see inside of here is we keep everything tightened down in the back and then you can actually see our manifold back there where the main lines come in from. So one of the other things you can see with the cylinder pins, there's actually nuts on the top of it so that it's much easier for those to be able to remove. You're not going to have to cut those out. You're also not going to have to be able to pound those out. With these, they'll simply drop right out and you're good to go. Another phenomenal feature that comes with the Beowulf 2 Ram is removable bolt-in liners. Instead of having all your liners plug weld, we've made it where you can bolt it in, which is, reduces your time in relining your baler and reduces your cost of ownership. Let's go back to Brent and Dave and watch a video on it. We're here at Engineering with Bill Brisbane, our engineer that designed and, and came up with the the bolt in floor liners and we want to show you what we think is pretty innovative and Bill I see you got it up on the screen here you can uh, show us what you got. All right, thank you Brent. Um, before I get into that I'll just kind of explain how this idea came about uh, in, in talking with our customers. Uh, a lot of them would like to see liners in their machines uh, because of the product wearing the, the, uh, the plates down and they are looking for a better way to replace them. The typical uh, way right now in the industry uh, involves a lot of torch work, involves uh, a lot of dirty work uh, and, and closed uh, space work um, to, to get the liner plates out because all the liner plates are all completely welded in to the frame of the machine. So the machine is now down for sometimes up to a week. Uh, a lot of cutting and grinding. To... Cutting and grinding, uh, it's just dirty and, and people are crawling around in that stuff. And um, so we, we figured maybe we could come up with a better way of doing this. Why not show us how we're gonna do this? All right, so what we're, what we're looking at doing is, is the uh, liners themselves are bolted into the machine. Uh, the, to get started on it, what you have to do then is the first thing you do is pull off the 
um, eject ram assembly. This then allows us room for people to get in and out and for the plates to be removed. Can you stop it right there, Minabil? When they pull that eject ram, what did you tell me earlier? Two hoses and a, yes, an right. electrical connection they got to take loose, right? There's two hydraulic lines and electrical connection that runs the sensors in the back end of the machine that, that control the ram. Um, all of which are accessible from the outside of the machine. Nobody crawls into the machine. So once again, that is now removed and out of the way. It sounds like a big undertaking, but there's not a whole lot to it. You then go to the underside of the machine, pull off the lock nuts and the heavy washers that hold the plate in place, tip it up, and drag it out diagonally through the opening that is left by the eject ram. And then there's two more plates in the gathering chamber that um, are held in the same way. Can you stop it again for me right there? Are those tabs that I see on there, they're going through the sidewall and that's the little bit of torch work yeah. that you're going to have to do is cut the welds loose yeah. on the outside of the on machine. The outside of the machine. Okay. Stick through the machine. There's three tabs per plate. They're about six inches long and so all of that is accessible from the outside. The other, the other small spot where there is a weld that needs to be cut is where the plates come together here. It's a T-shaped weld that we just hold the corners together. That is uh, quite easily done with a cutting wheel. Just and grind it out. Just, just grind, just yeah, grind, grind a bevel. Grind what's it. left right. of, of, the, of the weld because if, mm -hmm. if the plates are wore out, that weld might be half gone anyways right. because it's, it's being run over. So they then come out the um, Eject opening, ram opening. Eject ram opening. Right. Same thing on that side. That's pretty cool that they all fit out through there. And yep. I think you said earlier they were a couple hundred pounds a piece, yep. and so it's going to take a couple guys to yep. muscle them out of there. But that's a lot better than lifting a whole plate. Yeah, correct. Trying to get it through the chamber or out right. the rear end. Right. So we. Uh, it also. I wanted to point out to people. Just explain to us a little bit about. We gave extra clearance. We extended our legs. Um, and, and then um, our gathering ram does not have to be removed in order to pull a section of liner, correct? Correct. The, the ram, the gathering ram, just needs to be in its fully retracted position. The, the liner plates start in front of that ram about one inch, and um, there's, it's easily accessible. There's no welding along that side, so uh, there's, uh, it's, it's quite easy access as far as mm -hmm. replacing the liners. Yep. I've been looking at that clearance. I still think Wolf's going to have to go yeah, under there. You or me ain't going to get under it, but he will. It's because my arms are longer than yours. <laughs> that among uh, other things. You know, yeah. the other thing that I see in this, guys, and I know our, our, our service guys and being a service-based company mm -hmm. for the last 40 years, man, I'm, my guys are going to be fired up to go out on this job and not have to run a carbon arc, not have to torch, not to have a spark roll down their back. Well. Uh, you know, think of the safety issue. But, All that grinding and cutting. Yes. Uh, well, and it's, it's safe. The majority of our equipment is where, around fiber, around paper. Y right. You know what I mean? It's a exactly. it, fire. Fire watch is very critical, and it just eliminates a lot of. Um, and then it, it looks to me like it would be fairly simple to put them back right. in. You just reverse what we just right. saw, right? Right. Reverse what, what was just mm -hmm. shown, um, as you saw on the plates. Mm -hmm. themselves. You had your uh, bar grate strips that were on there. Those are, are, are tacked on so as not to, destroy the, to distort the plate. Um, get them bolted in, sucked down to the floor. Right. Get them bolted in, and get them pulled down flat and then... The other thing we can do too is obviously, you know, as things wear, it wears in differently. Right. That also allows us the opportunity that if we have to make an adjustment, Correct. we can make an adjustment, run our RAM back Prior on to our, welding the tabs absolutely. or whatever. Yeah. You know, especially in the, in, the, in, the, in the situation that we're not replacing our bolt-in gathering RAM floor. Correct. Yeah, because the, the gathering RAM floor is also removable. Do you have, a, you have a picture of that? Yes, I do. Yeah, see I can see the nuts and bolts coming through the back side of the machine, and you can see that there's there's your mm -hmm. your uh, heavy washers and lock nuts, 
and those are holding the uh, wear plate to the underside of the ram. Uh, to fit to replace that one though, the ram will need to be pulled uh, because the plate has to be able but to drop out. There's clearance to pull it right straight out the back, right? You the gotta... ram will come right straight out the back of the machine. You just gotta unhook your hoses, pull your cylinder pins, bring the, the cylinders together and, and pull the ram out. And uh, once it's out, you do the same thing. You unbolt them, pop the new ones on. There's going to be a couple of, of, of tack welds here on the back side just to keep that, that plate from shifting uh, be, so we don't have all of the pressure on, on the bolts themselves. The, the weld is actually holding the plate from moving. The bolts are just holding the plates to the machine, to the ram. Right. Now, all these plates, liner plates that we're replacing, and then obviously the ones that are in the machine, they're all hard ox, right? Yes. They're hard ox, they're hard ox 450 plates on the floor and an AR 400 plate on the ramp. Perfect. So they're all a, a hardened abrasion, I shouldn't say they're hardened, but they're an abrasion resistant material. Mm -hmm. so, so in theory, you know, we can go through a couple of ram floors, which is the smallest part and the right. easiest part to do right. before right. we even get into chamber liner. Correct. Thanks, Bill. I, that That's Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're thinking this will save a lot of time. Here we are back in the plant again, and I'm at the rear of the gathering ram with Dave, and I love this feature. These polycarbonate access covers allow you at a glance to see what's going on inside this machine. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, you know, I think if we look at it from an owner standpoint, we're trying to protect our investment, and we're trusting in our operator, hey Joe, is it clean behind the ram? And if we have, you know, solid access panels back here, we're just taking his word for it. Right, and we got a work light in here too. Yes. Which really makes it nice because you know you don't have to lock it out, you don't have to take the solid panels off, you don't need to go get a light and drag it over here to get mm -hmm. up inside and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You can, when this ram is for this lights up that whole chamber. Yes, I mean, it does. You can see What's going on? You can see if you got any buildup happening. You can see if you got an oil leak. And then, of course, I see this grease station here. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, the grease station and the placement of the hydraulics, our intention here was to bring the majority of what we need to pay attention to and, and, and keep an eye on to the back of the baler so that it's visible through our panels. Um, in this grease station, we're hitting all of the points that need grease, the pins, um, the shoes, uh, with the exception of the rear two cylinder end pins, which we can grease from here. Obviously, once these panels are removed, we're now in lockout tagout mode, right. but it, it just, it, it eliminates 80% of the time somebody would have to well, crawl under their baler to service it. You know as well as I do, when you go to look to see if somebody's greased something, you walk by, you can even look at these zerts and you're gonna know whether or not they're greasing it. Yes. I mean, it, it's not hard to figure out whether they've they've hit it with some grease or not. So I think that's really great feature, the grease stations, the hydraulics at the rear. I think that's a, another thing that you might wanna talk about a little bit. Yep, so all of our hydraulics, um, and again, in a glance, we can, we can walk by this and really the only connections we're not seeing is the connections to our are retract the on trunk, both cylinders. Yep. But everything is back here that a visual, at a visual glance, Brent, we can tell if there's something leaking sooner rather than later. All right, let's go see what Gary and Amber are doing. All right, sounds good. Thank you guys. All right, I am super excited to show you our power unit. Our power unit is made from high quality components such as Parker um, hydraulics, everything from the valves, the piggyback pump and the pump also our nice motor. Uh, one thing I absolutely love is we simplified our electrical system with this plug and play. We like to keep it very simple for everyone. I also wanna show you our control cabinet. Our control cabinet is full of high quality Allen Bradley parts. Everything from our PLC to our disconnect, our contactors. One of the things I really love about the Bale Wolf line of balers is our commitment to you is that all major components are in stock and can ship out immediately for you. Now let's take a look at the inside of the baler. We are super excited to show you the game-changing progressive shear. 
So as we're looking inside the machine, you can see that the progressive shear actually on the front where it spreads the material out, you're not just cutting across a single span. On the back side, you can see we have an angle on the shear that goes on the ram. An important part of this is that we're not using standard hardened material. This is T1 tool steel, inch and a half thick. One thing that I'm really excited about with all of this, this machine is built like a tank. Continuing on with that, one of the other important parts is that we use hard piping on our hydraulics. So when we come off of the main power unit, you can see we'll angle in here and we're using hard piping coming out. An important part of that is that we're not having the rubbing on the material, plus it's for a safer design. So we've gone with the industry standard Accent wire tire. One of my favorite features about the wire tire is it has an interchangeable head. So you're working away and a pinion were to break, you can literally remove the head, reinstall it, and be back up in bailing. The next feature I want to show you is our vertical door. We went with the vertical door in lieu of the horizontal door to help eliminate all the debris inside your tracks. The other thing I absolutely love about our vertical door is for durability, it locks right into the chassis of the floor. Another um, unique feature that we um, have gone with with the vertical door is its universal left hand or right hand eject. You have a baler, your business is growing, and you're now going to add another baler to your fleet, but you need to move this one to the side of the build, a different side of the building, right in the field. You can change which way it ejects. So if it's left hand, you can make it right hand. I want to take a minute and I want to show you our adjustable eyes. This lower eye right here really helps eliminate shear jams. It's movable so you can make sure you, you don't jam. Our upper eye up there allows you as you're changing material to make adjustments so that you ensure you get that full charge. So now let's take a look at our cylinders. A couple things that are really important with this. We're using twin seven inch cylinders on the back side. One nice part about this is that our angle of attack actually allows us to achieve higher bail weights using less pressure. Another part that I'll point out to you is the tail rollers that you see on the back side of the ram. Not only do we guide the, the system from the front, we guide it from the back as well. The last piece I want to show you is the pack shoe adjuster. It's shimless. When you come on the back there, you can see that back jack bolt. You'll turn that and it'll actually raise and lower the height of the ram without having to take the machine apart. Engineering's actually prepared a video for you. So let's take a look at that animation. Hello, uh, this is Bill Brisbane again. I'm going to show you the animation that uh, Gary had uh, mentioned on the pack shoe adjustment uh, wedges that we have on the Baylor Ram, uh, which is a shimless setup for uh, aligning your shear and your ram. This is located, here's the ram face, so these shoes are closer to the front of the machine. Here you have your wedge set up, your adjustment bolt, uh, that you then, what you would end up doing is turn that adjustment bolt in, which pushes the wedge in, putting pressure on the pad, which in turn starts bringing the ram up. Uh, that way there's no need for shims and it's just uh, some wrench work as you can see the ram lifts and then when you come up and look at the top you can see here's your hold down bars it can then bring you up to the the hold down bars and get your shear tolerance back where you want it so there are no uh, gaps for wedging and jamming um, and it seems to be working out quite well for us but what we'll do is we'll go back out into the shop where dave has an actual model of the wedge assembly and we can take a closer look at that. We're now in front of one of the rams for the Beowulf line of balers. Uh, you can see the mass and, and the heavy dutiness of it. And what we want to do is talk about the shimless pack shoe adjuster. I know Dave in your testing in Wisconsin you've had to adjust shoes. So why don't you walk us through how this operates? Thanks Brent. And even though I know your see-through panels are your favorite option of the baler, this is my favorite option of the baler. There was a lot of R&D, a lot of trial and error that, that went into the research and development of this. 
Oh yeah, we drove Bill nuts. Oh, we drove Bill <laughs> crazy. And uh, you know, but we, you know, after many attempts, we came up with this design. And the reason we wanted to show this, physically show this, is to, to help everybody understand how massive this is. So let me explain it to you in theory or, the, or in principle. So traditional balers, it, it's sort of a pain. You have to try to shim it by shimming your shoe in order to lift your, your ram up to your hold downs. And we wanted to find a better way. And we believe we have found a better way. So with our shimless pack shoe adjuster, you're basically driving this wedge, which is lifting your ram in order to create the shear talents accordingly. So we want to lift our ram up to our hold downs and then we shim our knife down to achieve our tolerance. So we have this wedge that rides over the shoe. The assembly fits on top and what we're adjusting it with, we're backing off our, our lock nut and this is our adjustment. We're driving this shoe under the wedge. We're driving the wedge under the shoe and it lifts our ram accordingly. We do that repetitively until we run out of jack bolt. When we are out of jack bolt, our shoe needs to be replaced. When that happens, we have to remove these four bolts. Our jack bolt comes out. Our jack bolt screws into our wedge and we pull our wedge out of the assembly. We remove our assembly. We have four bolts. We remove the shoe. We replace the shoe. Put it back in place. Our wedge is now engaged. Back our jack bolt out. And we do it again. I can see why you uh, like this feature. Uh, it has to be a time saver and so much easier to do. But I think now we ought to go see what Gary and Amber are up to. Sounds good. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Evans. He's the operations manager at JWR, and he's going to show us how user-friendly the baler really is. Thanks, Amber. One of the main challenges we faced in engineering with this was to uh, make this as simple as possible to use. We recognize that uh, maybe not everyone has an engineering degree to run a baler, and we want to make it as easy as possible to run. So we put a lot of effort into how easy this baler is to run. As you can see, the panel is very simple. That's by design. We did that intentionally. Simple indicator lights, whether they're red, orange, and green, um, they all have different meanings. Very simple. The controls down below, very easy. I mean, two buttons and a key, basically. E-stop if anyone has a problem. Simple reset to make the baler reset after a e-stop condition or when you power it up and a simple start button to start the baler. Um, this will function in auto mode, about as easy as it gets. A key for security, um, owners and can control who uh, has control of the baler with a key. And then the real uh, workings of the machine are, are done in the HMI screen. This also was, was intended to be very simple. Um, the idea is the easier it is for somebody to read and understand, the more likely they are to keep the baler running. As you can see, there's not a whole lot on it. Um, we do have the ability to control the material you're putting in. So if you'll see here, we have, uh, it says cardboard selected right now, so we have recipes built into this. We can tell the baler different parameters for different material that you're running. With a simple touch of a button, we can tell it a different commodity to bail, whether that be cans, cardboard, cores, the baler is designed to be able to bale cores. You could be running tires or paper or PET or aluminum. Whatever that material incoming stream is, we can accommodate it with the baler and optimize the baler for that material. Then we have a, a settings in this baler that we can go to. These settings are protected by password for the owner to be able to uh, have control of the baler. We don't want just anyone coming up and being able to change settings of the baler. 
once we have it optimized as startup, we want to maintain those settings and only change them based on the incoming material or what the owner of the baler may want. When we go in there, these are our different profiles or recipes, whatever, uh, whatever you may want to call them. When we open one of those up, this is our cardboard recipe. This, these recipes can fully be named. You can name it whatever your commodity is. That way from the home screen, your operator has control of exactly what's going in and he knows what, what he's looking at. This machine functions a little bit differently than most balers. Um, we control the pressure that we're bailing at with the recipe. So we come in here and we have a pressure setting. So on these last cardboard run that we were doing here, we were bailing them at 1500 PSI. That's what's in that recipe right there. Very simple, very straightforward, but again, controlled by management, not by your baler operator, um, unless owner or management decided to do so. Um, a bail count system in here for knowing what our production was throughout the day. We can clear it at any time. So um, at the beginning of shift, you clear that, you know exactly what you made per shift. Um, we have some basic troubleshooting stuff in here that if you're on the phone with tech to support, something like that, we can come to a, a IO status, basically telling us what positions the machine is in, where, uh, what states, what's going on, what's happening. And finally, the last thing is just some very simple uh, data on the baler. Um, it's gonna tell us position of RAM, pressure we're at, just the basic data that you need to be able to operate this machine. Wow, Mike, that's impressive. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Amber. A couple of the things that we really wanted to address when discussing this system was network security. Also, some of the wireless features that we built into the system. So let me open this up. You can see inside the control panel, here's our wireless control system. You can actually enter this in using CAT5 cable if you want to allow us onto your network. If not, we can go Wi-Fi. The third option is, is that we can actually use a cell phone and turn our cell phone into a hotspot, which allows us to remotely troubleshoot the system. The other opportunity is that it allows us to continue to optimize your system by taking the recipes and continuing to dial them in as your needs change. And the final step to optimize your system is to add the proper accessories. As you'll see behind us, this is an over-the-back conveyor added to this baler, but there are so many options. Gary, tell them some of the options they have. Sure, some of the different options that you can put on here. Pit conveyors. You can also use a cart dumper to be able to load it in with full totes of material. Also, you can use a side feeding conveying system. This week we ran some cardboard bales, just to give you an example. This is actually run with this system that you see over here. So you'll see some of the different bale weight sizes. This one right here, we ran some lower bale weights. This is actually for an export model. Did you know we ran those at 1500 PSI? Yeah, yeah, and we actually made them shorter. So the good news is, these are the little ones. Um, here's another nice one that I was pretty proud of. Yeah, and 50 horsepower, 2400 PSI. Yeah, exactly. Now this one, that one's my favorite. That's my favorite too. I think the other thing that we need to remember is, is that we took all of the learnings over years and years and years of experience and put it all together for you as a team. Now we're out in the plant. We're with Saul Fifalski, our controls engineer, and we're gonna go over the programming of this machine, the adjustable eyes, and the remote diagnostic capabilities. Uh, one of the things that I like about this machine is we have several programs in it already but I'm gonna let Saul walk us through it and, and then we'll talk about them as we go through them. So we have a Allen Bradley HMI touch screen. We made it as simple as we could on the face of it. Um, real simple, see the hours. Displays what's going on with the machine. Right now the key is off, it tells you that. You can select your products, alarm history, you know, where your RAM location, your pressures, your temperatures, things like that. So, so, tell me then, so we have our various commodities programmed into the machine, correct? I think there's correct. eight of them, right? Eight, there's there's eight, eight, recipes, eight, eight, correct. eight or nine recipes currently, and not that we can't add more, um, you know, can expand you on up? it. Can you bring it up on the screen? Yes, so you go to the settings tab, you have to log in, it's password protected, so nobody uh -huh. can sh just change it on you. Seven, one password 
and here we are. Okay, so we now we're seeing on the screen that there's cans, cores, paper, aluminum, copper, sheet paper, and magazines. Now, I know from the testing that you've done, these are generic settings, right? Right, these are, you know, let, let's take cardboard for example. It, Cell designed, you know, based on our testing and trial and error, um, you know, a program that's more universal. Um, and then our plan is to, as we go into the customer's application, you know, it's easy to think that cardboard is cardboard, but it, but it's it's really not. It could be big, it could be small, it could be a certain mix. It, you know, it can fall into the chamber differently. Could he, be wet. Could, be, could be wet. Could be dry. Um, and. and you know, where Sol really uh, helps us and, and, and can accelerate this process is as we're testing different um, versions of this material, we adapt to the customer stream. Kind of optimize the program to right. make the best Absolutely. We'll, we'll be sitting we out get. there, you know, we, we've, we, we've spent hours and hours of testing so, and, and we can just get, even if Sol's not there, Sol yeah. can come in and, you know, right. help and us remotely. Right, typical installation, you're going to have a tech on site. Yes. And along with that tech on site, as long as we have the capability to contact the machine, Saul can be sitting in his office and help that tech dial in the program to get that maximum bale weight, as, make the bales look good. Get right. Them. Yes, as long as we get an internet connection to the machine, you can do it through a cable, you can do it through a hotspot on your phone, you can do it through a Wi-Fi connection. I can access this with your permission through a safe network and I can get on and I can change the program here or in the PLC, whatever's mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. So yep. there's, there's, and that's a free support that's offered for everybody that purchases one of these machines. Right, yep. and, and, and you know, let's just sort of elaborate a little more on, on, the, on the technical support, the remote support. How, well, you know, you guys were testing up at JWR. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know that you guys had Saul working with you. You're in Wisconsin, we're in Michigan. How'd that work out? Oh, it worked out great. Hey, it, it, uh, hey, Sal, we need a, an adjustment or a tweak here. Um, yep, you know, and Sal could just get right on it remotely. As we're running, Sal can see what we're doing mm -hmm. and, you know, change sequences, change, you know, pretty much so. I, I really don't know where the limitations end, uh, you know, as far as. Oh, well, it's just what we're, really, anything that I can do here, I can do remotely. There you go. It, aside from Backspace. using a wrench. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where we fill the bill with line of bailers. You know, in, in Sol's programming and, and the system we've developed, we want everybody to understand that it's not going to be generic. It's not going to be cookie cutter. You know, that's our starting point. But but your units will all, always be fine tuned We're to your specific. We're going to optimize their, their program. Ab absolutely, yep. right. that, that's part of the package. That's what now, you get. When I know you get that us. part of that optimization has to do with the two eyes we have. We have a vertical eye mm -hmm. that's adjustable and a horizontal eye. I think there's right. a couple of them there. Right. And I, I in. Upper, lower, and you know, just another unique feature that we built into this. And um, you know, our lower one, not everything falls in the chamber the same way. It piles differently. You may want to, you know, start your your gathering ram a little sooner, a little later. You know, so this one actually is on a track mm -hmm. and runs this way. And then this one, you know, in most typical setups when we have an extension hopper with a conveyor, we all we mount this one up high, but we also give it a range so that you know we can we can this thing can travel. You know, instead of having a fixed location, um, and then having to yeah, the material falls in different. You're going to have to make yes. adjustments with the eye. Right. And, and another thing too, actually, we do give a positioning front and back mm -hmm. on our lower eye as well. You know, so if you want to move from the side to side to the front to back, right. we can do that as well. Well, I know on a lot of these options, I know we got patents pending on a lot of them. Uh, they're pretty unique. We haven't seen them anywhere in the industry, and. I think that's what makes a Beowulf a Beowulf is the, the optimization of, of the machine to get the bale weights, get the crack size bales, and, and do it with the least amount of uh, work, yeah. you know, get it dialed in right. No, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, through Sol's design, he's done a very good job. You know, the other thing we, we really focused on is we want to keep it simple. Absolutely. Y you know, it, this is simple. And, and every operator should be able to walk up and use this. Right. And with a little bit of training, they're up and running. They can select their product fast. They can get up and running, and off they go. Yep. Once they set up a recipe, it's just there to use over and over and over again. Well, yep. I think you know, Dave, and I know in the, the sites that we've monitored where we put these out at customer sites, the selected few we put them at, they've had no problem at all 
with us. It's, it's been very easy for them to pick it up. It's and, been great. And make it work. Yep. So I think with that, we should probably head back into the conference room. I'm sure the people have been calling in and there's a bunch of questions for us to answer. So let's head that way. All right. All right, we're back in the conference room. Um, Brett and I are here to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Um, I, I, go ahead, Brent. I see we have a question. What's the operating PSI of the baler? Uh, I know the PSI is 2800 max, but I know in our testing at your place, we have run several different materials and that PSI depends on the material. Would you like to explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, 2,800 PSI is our maximum operating pressure, low pressure system. Uh, 3,000 is our max pressure. Um, what we've really worked hard, uh, you know, on trying to um, perfect with the Bell Wolf Bailers, uh, we don't believe in running at red line. You know, it, we, we just don't. Uh, we we, we want to make the bales yep. we need to make. Um, and we want to optimize and we want to save on wear and tear and we want longevity uh, with the uh, ultimate result of the product that the customer desires. Get the best out of it we can at the lowest pressure. Yes, yes. So again, you know, elaborating on a lot of the conversation prior, um, you know, it's about the, you know, about, about the recipes. We're, we're making a, you know, as Gary stated, an export bale, um, want to go 40, 47 inches wide. Um, you know, we ran those bales to 1500 pound bales at 1500, 14 to 1500 pound bales at 15 to 1600 right. PSI. And every recipe has its own setting of PSI. I mean, it's, it's right. not just a cookie cutter. It's correct. You, you will not just get one cardboard recipe. You can have, you could have 15 cardboard recipes if that's what you choose to do. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. Uh, what are your throughput tons per hour and bale weights? Now, I know on flattened cans that we've been running that uh, we're averaging like 1187 a bale. Mm -hmm. We're getting like six and a half tons an hour. Yes. Uh, what did you find on other things that you were running? Uh, the other thing that we've, we've done, obviously, extensive testing on uh, is the cardboard runs. Uh, have done, you know, 20 bale plus consecutive runs mm -hmm. of cardboard, yep. uh, you know, medium to large size, uh, mostly knockdown. Um, and where we were at there, um, you know, through all of our calculations, average bill weight uh, 1612. And in the production run, we were right, the number was 8.6 tons per hour. So, you know, we're right between eight and nine tons an hour consistently. Right. On, and, the, on, the, on the two round. And what kind of, you know, I know there's a lot of different weights in cardboard. There's a lot of different things. What mm -hmm. what were you actually running? I mean, we weren't running. No, they weren't stand up boxes. Right. Yeah, it was all pretty much so knock knock down material. Um, you know, a lot of packer load stuff. Um, the stuff that uh, you know people will see in their centers. Um, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. We, we try to make it as it, we're making this as real as it can be. Um, next question. Next question is. What is the testing demo facility, which for everybody's knowledge, we have that at your place in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Why don't you fill them in to, as to what we have done there? Well, um, again, it's about you do it our R&D. Right. And, uh, you know, we're firm believers, not asking anybody to be our test child. Uh, so we have set up our own R&D center. Um, it is open to any potential Bill Wolf customer. That's where we're doing our R&D testing. Um, and we're also going to do customer demos. So, you know, if you think you have a material that you want to see build in our baler, the invitation is standing. Contact us, you know, after after the launch here, and we will, you know, make arrangements and, and make that happen for you. My understanding is that through the rest of this year, we will do those demos for nothing. All they got to do is get their material to us. They're welcome Correct. to fly in, observe it on their own, and we will run that material for them. Correct. Yep. It's exactly what it is. What Super about, close. I'd like you to expand just a little bit. What kind of materials have you tested? We've I mean, touched. I know what we've done out at, uh, at the customer sites, but uh, we've tested a lot of material in Wisconsin. We have tested a lot of material. Um, 
you know, we've tried to, t to test the tough stuff. I mean, we've even been running um, semi-load after semi-load of slab paper through our baler, not, not preconditioned. Um, you know, roll cores has also been a good test for us. Um, everything has been very positive, very successful containers, uh, when, fiber, when, paper. When, you, when you're running uh, cores, yeah. now the cores that I'm familiar with could be from an eighth inch wall to say a three quarter inch wall. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen six or seven inch cores that only got like a one inch hole in them. Mm -hmm. it, bottom line is we have to be able to shear it. Right. We, you know, we can't shear a log, it's not a log splitter. But so we'll, but we'll we would have course. to test. We'll, we would have to test, which is right. why you know we, we invite to, our our potential. If customers. we were to get something that massive, thick, uh, and and there may be other criteria too that they got to do, you know, cut certain length, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, that's really good. Uh, yeah. So you know, I guess uh, we're wrapping it up. Uh, and again, we we um, we hope we uh, gave you um, the information we were looking for. You know, help. In, make you more educated in the bill of line of balers. We're very excited to have this opportunity. Uh, we feel really good about our product and we have, uh, you know, done our best to make sure that we've done our R and D and the things that we need to do prior to taking it to market. So, um, you know, we're real excited and we're, you know, we've had an overwhelming response and interest in our yeah. bail line up to it's this It's been point. amazing to me. You know, I, that's the first time I've ever done one of these. I think it's probably the first time you've done one. And it uh, the response has been awesome. It's been real good. Um, the Bell Wolf uh, webpage is, is now fully functional up with some good videos on it. Um, BellWolf.com, go on it, take a look around. Um, any questions, you can reach out to either Brent or I or any one of our, our sales teams or your contacts. And uh, we'll, we'll do our very best to answer every question you have. Yeah. Be great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and we hope you enjoyed this webinar. This session was recorded and will be made available within the next few days. And again, for any additional information, to place an order, or to ask for additional questions, please visit www.beowulf.com. Have a great rest of your day.